All right, right. we are if on. You wanna, if you want to hear what we're talking about, intouchnews.com. We are on. Hit the red button, the play button. Hey, and here we go. This is Power Moves. Power Moves. With celebrities, celebrities athletes, athletes, key influential executives, like my man, mm. Mr. CEO Transition, Mr. Career Crossover, share how they make money, money, how they attract power, power, and how they earn, earn respect. respect. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, Mr. Joel Sylvan in the house. Joel this Sylvain Elvin. in the house. This Mr. Elvin. Power Moves himself. Yes. That's right. That's yes, right. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to be on the mic with you yeah, this yeah, lovely man. Saturday, this hot, humid Saturday. Ooh, it is time. hot, man. You, can, you see me melting on, on Facebook Live. <laughs> and like. you know us chocolate <laughs> brothers, boy. Woo, we got mm -hmm. an extra strong around here, you know but that's saying? all good. The, the Tootsie Roll is melting right now. <laughs> <laughs> we on fire. Well, we on fire on the mic right now. So welcome to the show. Welcome What's to going the show. on today, man? Man, there's a lot going on, man. Yeah, I mean, right is. now we at the we at the incubator, the 5508. I want to give a five, big five, shout out five. to my man Derek oh, Blue hey, the, doing his thing. And the parking lot is full. Come on, y'all. Like I can't even find a space today. Without Wonderful. a doubt. I mean, awesome. the, the, a lot of great vendors. I caught up with a gentleman that we we, we met at uh, the Damon John book signing party over a year ago. Okay. And all he had was a concept. I gave him a, you know, we talked, we chopped it up, and now he's he got a, his clothing brand brand called Ripe Brand Clothing. Ripe and, Brand. And uh, and now he's featured on GQ magazine in Britain. What? Yes, sir. He's getting that international like money. That? He's wow. getting that international money. So that's okay. that's Shout what's out. up. What's the brand again? Ripe brand okay, clothing. Okay, what do they do? What do they do? What kind of clothing, man? Just... Uh, you know, he has he has t-shirts, he okay. has caps, but the but it's in the experience of the brand, really. Okay. So what he does is that he he really shares his his uh the the the, the purpose of creating like a a branding statement, and that's why it's called Ripe Brand Clothing. Love it. Love so it. it's all Go about ahead, the experience. Brother. Speaking of clothing, man, what do, what you got on today, man? This active faith. Tell us a little bit about that story. Well, it's in honor of our guest today that we're going to break down in a minute. But, you know, I had to throw on the, the golf attire. I got my active faith cap, my active faith polo, and this dry fit. I'm trying to tell you the oh. quality. You can't touch it, feel it on air. But Ooh. I can tell you, <laughs> it, it, it fits your body. It lays down on you. Lanny Smith, the CEO, creator of active faith, him and Anthony Tolliver and his investors like Steph Curry. Uh, way to go. These are quite... Great examples of gentlemen who were, who are in the game, but they're also in the game of being CEOs of a brand, and they've launched it from these small bracelets all the way to entire apparel line. So shout out to Lanny Smith, my man, fifty grand for him and Anthony Toller creating the Active Faith brand. Um, looking pretty good and feeling good. They say when you look good and feel good, you what? Do good. Do good. All you right. do good. All right. All right. Well, you know, uh, man, let's let's give a big shout out to the True North. True North. The Toronto North. Raptors. To the Raptors. Give it up. Give, give it, it up, up to the Hand Raptors. Clap to the Raptors. Man, that championship. is that Material. is uh, incredible. I like to give a big shout out. I mean, I know you must know him. Uh, I can't even pronounce his name, but the president of the Toronto Raptors. Uh, I mean, that Masai brother. Masai Ujiri. Yeah, Masai. Masai. What's going on? The brainchild. I mean, yes. he's the one that put it together. He took the big risk. Yeah, huge in, risk. In, in getting Kawhi Leonard, and now they are world champions. Champions. Him and uh, their international ambassador, Drake, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But no, shout you know, out to OVO, T.O. OVO, OVO, OVO. Um, shout out to T.O. because, you know, basketball obviously originated in Canada, and for a long time, you know, people really thought it was a USA uh, created sport, but Canadians invented basketball, and now they oh, are wow. basketball royalty. What do you mean? So, do Dr. James Naismith was from Toronto? Yes, man. Hooping with a basket in Toronto. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a little bit of history. Y'all ain't think I know that. But, <laughs> hey, uh, but no, uh, Quality um, it, uh, finals again by the NBA put yeah. on, and uh, for them to have their first champions that are international, it signifies for their league that it's going places. Once again, they're progressive. Obviously, hockey has uh, been international uh, from U.S. to Canada competing, but this is the first time a sport outside of hockey has done that in, in Absolutely. quite classic fashion. And might I add, if you're a basketball technical person, it's the first time a non-lottery pick 
team in terms of none of their players were top 14 picks um, when they came into the NBA. So wow. this, is, this is that team where you say these are a bunch of hardworking guys mm-hmm. who came together. And I mean, really look at Van, Fle- Van Fleet. Yep, with his Van missing Fleet. tooth and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, he got enough money now to be putting in rows of teeth right, on him and his boys. That's hey, right. But the same thing, uh, shout out to Nick Nurse, the, yeah. the head coach. And, uh, and shout out to Dwayne Casey before laying the foundation. A lot of those same players uh, are playing due to his work. And um, Nick, Nick is a, a genius in a way because – he and I started at the D League together, the NBA. Now it's called the G League, the Gatorade right. League. But Nick was uh, a journeyman and started out in, in Iowa, in Des Moines, with the Iowa Energy, uh, which is a longstanding team now, another name in the in the G League. But um, awesome opportunity to see the quality of basketball um, go international and Toronto it must be on fire oh my gosh they're on fire just, man just, if you haven't gone to Toronto you should just go because uh besides them being basketball champions now it's a great city uh one of the top cities and my favorite in mm-hmm. all of North America wow seriously yeah it's an awesome place to visit but let's get on with the show man yeah, what's yeah. going on well, today I mean, we got. I mean, we got a lot going on, a lot to talk about. I like to give um, some shout outs to my man, uh, Carl Thomas. Carl Thomas, you talking about bad boy Carl Thomas? Bad boy Carl Thomas. Today today is his birthday. Okay, okay. Today's his birthday. Another another hidden figure, and you know, and and our guests will will talk a little bit about him, Mr. Tony Shellman. Tony Shellman and Nietzsche. Remember okay. the Nietzsche clothing oh, line? Oh man, you taking me back. A yes. lot of y'all don't know it. Nietzsche was yes, rocking right. some strong yes. fashion wear for and he's still, everybody. And, he, and un, uh, you know, I'm gonna have to bring him on the show because he's still doing some. some so Tony gear. and I, does he have his braids, his his locks back, or he's low haircut now? But for a long time, he might even be bald now. No, so he's not bald. Cut, cut, um, cut. He, he's he's kind of in between. Okay, he's so kind of in between. Him and I did the Forty Under Forty Award uh, by Network Journal Magazine out of okay. New York City. So I go along. Man, we got so many people that we know, bro. Come on now, That's this right. is awesome. This is this is crazy. And um, uh, what else I wanted to talk about? Well. I got to give a shout out to the sponsor. We we have a new sponsor, international sponsor. As a matter of fact, they're from Canada too. Okay, Canada from Ottawa, Canada. Ottawa. It is called Waxdale Pitch Deck. Okay, the Waxdale Pitch Deck, where entrepreneurship is our business. They're okay. our they're our All sponsor right. for this this show. In addition to, um, uh, you know, Oxygen by our boy Juwan Howard. Yes, our coach. Juwan Howard, coach Juwan coach Howard from Michigan, Michigan now. and uh, a quick shout out to the Smile Experiment. We're the serving Smile single Experiment. mothers and living elegantly. Yes. They're getting ready to launch some events, um, so stay tuned. No, we will, we will, we right? will. So, so today's show, you know, what what's what's our nine medallions? And can you give our our audience what what nine medallions is all about? So the nine medallions and pro to CEO. And, Let's talk and, about pro. Wait, wait, wait. wait okay. Let me let me rewind, back down. Rewind. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so first of all. This is Kevin Carr, the CEO of Pro to CEO. Okay. And okay. AKA Mr. Transition. Appreciate it. AKA Mr. Whoop Whoop, 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 whoop. Career, Career crossover. crossover. Okay. <laughs> so the nine medallions is one of his career crossover tenants. And yep. he's going to share with us what the theme of our show is going to be all about. So a lot of people may know me from the NBA and know me from working with players during the draft. Uh, all the transition, but I four or five years ago I transitioned to my own brand, Pro to CEO. It's being for you to be the CEO of your life, really to create the outcomes and business in the industry and be more professional in what you do. We work with individuals, we work with teams, we work with organizations on creating training development and management and business development strategies and products and services to help them advance in the business space. With that being said, we have a really strong leadership program model called the Nine Medallions. And I've got a book coming out on that later on this fall, which we will do an entire show on. All right. I can't wait. But for now, the Nine Medallions really covers nine intrinsic leadership traits that are really time tested. And they are really for anybody who is looking to really install their own leadership pillars 
of strength to make them a champion because when you spell all the nine medallions out, they model the word champion. That's right, champion. So, so today we're going to be talking about two of those, uh, one ingenuity and the other opportunism. That's right. Obviously. So we're going to be talking to one of our guests who really has the ingenuity and the creativity like no other and as style to it major mm -hmm. style point yes he does and then the other piece is his opportunism mentality he's entered uh a lot in the space of diversity and inclusion before it became hot and sexy as mm. a word he's That's right. been doing it and in a difficult space at that the, the opportunism to go into golf the space of golf and we know that for a long time uh people of color have uh had a position and place in golf. It just mm -hmm. hasn't been always prominent. And obviously with uh, major uh, successes by Tiger Woods and others, it's really changed the game. But we still have a ways to go there. And one of the things I love about our upcoming guest is he's been really strategic in his approach to trying to change the face of golf and how people of color look at golf and how we should really be uh, in the game and not just sort of on the fence and just and happy being a to, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. to see people, other people. We need to be doing things that allow us to be uh, creative and own and manage and lead. And he's created a whole brand that has done that. So I'm super excited to talk to him when he's here. But overall, the medallion of ingenuity is about taking something creative and using your curiosity and your energy to go forward with it and not wait on anybody to kind of dictate and tell you how it should be done. It's really about you exercising your right and your creative uh, juices to, to be um, on top of things that might be uh, out there, but also to do it in a way that's your own. So to be super, super interested, super, super creative, and to be able to take the ingenuity and the effort to create something that maybe has been done or maybe not been done, but you do it in the way that's creative for you. And that ingenuity allowed me to create Pro to CEO, a transition brand that I really wanted to change the narrative of a transition for high achieving people. I thought that you could be in business and work for a company forever Mm -hmm. Or you could possibly transition to business and create something on your own, but you needed some bridge there to help you do that. And I felt like a lot of people like me were scared to take the leap and to take that creative energy and put it to work and allow you to create your own. But I decided that I wasn't going to be fearful. I was going to have faith in myself and what I wanted to do. So I began to push on that idea and I studied and I created and I developed behind the scenes after hours talking to people, mapping out, saving money, going to conferences, writing, uh, getting graphics, doing things that sort of allowed me to see it in plain vision before it actually got executed upon. So I had an entire plan. And that's where I think a lot of people, you don't have to jump out on this right away. It can be something you work on. So the ingenuity was being kind of put in place. And then the opportunism for me to say, you know, this is the time now for me to jump in and for me to kind of go there. So right now we may uh, want to take, is there somebody calling in now? Or, okay. What's that? All right. Let's go ahead. Oh, we, we got a, call, a phone? call. We have a phone call or we got a break. All right. Okay. Let's take it. All right. Awesome. So we got a break coming up. Yeah, let's take that break. So once again, this is Power Moves with Power celebrities, moves, athletes, athletes, key influential executives share how they make money, money, how they attract power, power and how they earn respect. respect. Once again, this is In Touch Radio, yes. reality radio where everyone, everyone is, is a star. star. Call in 813-444-9588. We chilling with my man Esteban on the on, on the, the ones and twos on the ones and twos and on behind <laughs> the, the board, board. <laughs> just getting used to things. That's my man right, right we there. We breaking in. We we getting creative juices and ingenuity going already. All right, let's get right. those commercials, Playboy. All right now.
Hi, this is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House, bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests right here on In Touch Radio. Hey, this is Agent Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecues? Come see them two brothers in the grill, located at 423 Virginia Street, Charleston, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some and get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, All right. We're back again. We're back. So power moves where celebrities, athletes, key influential executives share how they make money, money. how they attract power, power, and how they earn respect. respect. We're waiting on our guest, Mr. Wendell Haskins, to give us a call. Yes, sir. Hey, 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 Playboy. Hey, give us a call back at the uh, 813-888, I mean, 444 number. Yeah, call in directly to the line. All talk right. to you in a minute. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're about to get it on with Mr. Wendell, affectionately in the song, but we have the <laughs> real, not a song. We got the real one coming on. You know so what? We, so just to introduce you to the guest, uh, this is a man that truly represents iron, sharpens iron. Once again, we got a phone call. Hello, this is Power Moves Radio. Who's speaking? Hello? Yeah. Yo, hello. Hey, 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 this is Wendell Haskins. All right. So let me, I'm going to do a quick introduction, and then Kevin Carr's going to do a little quick con- introduction, you know what I'm saying? So Wendell Haskins is the man behind many men. When it, when we think about Iron Sharpens Iron, this man has been behind the scenes in the music industry, in the fashion industry, in the sports and entertainment. I mean, he's he's pretty much touched uh, a lot of individuals, and uh, you know, I'm not going to steal the thunder because that's the whole purpose of the show. But, but, Mr. Kevin Carr, in your experience being involved in the NBA, you know, share with folks how Wendell has has been instrumental in 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 helping you. Yeah, I, I first, Wendell, you there, right? Uh, this is my man Kevin Carr. What's That's Kevin up? Carr, yes, sir. Mr. Wendell <laughs> Haskins, what's going on, man? Mm, what's going on, brother? All right, good, good, good. I le- first learned of Wendell. I, I actually heard of him before I met him. That's I mean, how. That's I mean, how he, I mean, influential. He, he, yeah, he, he, was. he rocks with a story. No doubt, no <laughs> doubt. And I'll never forget uh, Leah Wilcox. You know Leah, right? Yep, very yeah, well. Leah, Lee, Lee Will said, um, we got this guy who helps us do what we do. And I was <laughs> like, okay, because I went to um, a backstage thing, and it was really super creative, and out front it was super creative. I was like, I know it's somebody from the, I know somebody <laughs> from the NBA did not do this. And they were like, no, nah, we got this guy named Wendell. That does what he does to help us with style and image and brand positioning. And that's how I met uh, you in terms of hearing about you first. And that's something that I want people to kind of understand as we talk to you, that one of the things about your brand is, Wendell, a lot of people experience it and they never knew they experienced it, but they were like, wow, this is pretty fly. (laughs) And um, I want to say that's how I kind of came in contact with you. I experienced you and what you did for the NBA before I actually even met you. So it's great to have you on, man. So it's a pleasure, too, because last time we spoke, we were in West Palm. Uh, so it was good. It's good to know you still doing your thing for sure. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Yeah, great to great to join you guys, man. Awesome, awesome. Well, you know, first of all, we're gonna wish you a happy Father's Day coming up. This is gonna be your <laughs> second one, right? What's that? Uh, uh, Father's Day. The second Father's Day. 
yeah, yeah, you could say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I know that the, your son came in between, but you know we want to wish you a happy Father's Day, and 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 if if you can share with with folks a little bit about you know your story, the fact that you know you grew up in in Patterson, New Jersey, and you know a little bit about your family life and 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 how you represent the HBCUs to the utmost. Yeah, man. Uh, this, 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 what do you want to know? I'm here. I'm here. What do you want to know? What do you want to know? Bro? Well, just you know, just tell us. You know, what what got you inspired to to actually you know go to a HBCU? You know, what's the significance of that? And then you know, what got you inspired to get into the the music business? Hold on, man. I I, I lost you for a second. Can you say that again? I said, uh, what made you choose to go to a HBCU? Because you could have went to a whole bunch of different colleges. You're a bright young man from Patterson representing. <laughs> but, you know, what made you decide to go to a HBCU? And then when you graduated, um, what was that experience like? And then how did you foray into the music business? Yeah, well, you know, it was all about what I was exposed to. You know, um, my dad went to Syracuse. My mother went to Virginia Union. Right. So mm-hmm. my mom went to an HBCU um, and then I have an older brother and an older sister and they both went to HBCU. So my older brother, my oldest brother, who's the oldest, he went to Howard and my sister went to Hampton, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, um, being the youngest and being exposed to, you know, Syracuse, which my dad was actually the first black running back at Syracuse. So we were really um you know, uh, exposed to Syracuse and pretty intensely because mm-hmm. my dad stayed, stayed involved with Syracuse throughout his life. And uh, particularly, um, you know, he was a letterman of distinction and we would go back to Syracuse for big events. And, you know, when the Carrier Dome opened, we went there as well. And then, you know, when uh, Virginia Union would have their homecoming in Richmond, we'd go you know, to the big games, Virginia Union against Virginia State. And I right. was like, I, need, I like this. So, <laughs> go, go, <clap. laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, the energy and everything was just so, and so many beautiful people of color and just seeing them enjoying, you know, uh, just kind of, you know, having that great experience that really paralleled what I saw at, at even Syracuse, but uh, predominantly a people of color, man, you know, so mm-hmm. that had a big, big influence and a profound influence on, on my life. And then, you know, going to uh, see my brother at, at Howard and going to see my sister, my sister at Hampton, um, you know, you know, the Howard and the, the Howard and Hampton comparison, right? Of course. Always a big deal, right? Of course. So I went to, I went, when I went to see my brother at Howard, I was like, okay, this is cool. And then when I went to see my uh, sister at Hampton, I was like, you know, Howard, you know, is in the city. You know what I mean? Right. I mean if you right. go to Howard, it's like in the city. I didn't feel like I was at a, at necessarily at a, you know, at that time College. of my life. I was like, it didn't feel like I was going to visit a, um, a university. You know, mm-hmm. we we dropped my brother off at Drew Hall. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's right smack dab in the city. Right but, you know, city. when you go to Hampton, when you go to Hampton, you drive onto a campus. That's man. right. You know what I mean? You drive right. onto a campus. It's private. It's secluded. Um, and it, you know, it's right on the water. Um, and, uh, just having that experience, I, you know, I said, wow, I, I really like this, you know, right. so I, I chose, Ham- so I chose Hampton okay. and, uh, okay. and, and, um, you know, and I love Hampton, love Hampton, you know, to this day, um, you know, I'm a proud Hampton alumni and All right. Shout even, out rela- to Hampton. even, even, even the relationships that I've built, uh, we still like a family, man. You know, the mm. people that I've gone to school with and experience, we still keep in touch and we still have a lot of camaraderie, a lot of school spirit. People, you know, we keep each, keep um, in touch with each other as as uh, as friends, as business folks, and almost like a family, you know. That's I was awesome. just in Miami yesterday and ran into three of my, you know, alumni from, you know, different years. I went right. to meet a, a, a good brother of mine who was, you know, three years my senior, um, I ran into another brother who was my classmate and then another younger, you know, guy who was, you know, a few years behind me, you know, we went and met up but, and just coincidentally happened to meet up at the American Black Film Festival, which is taking place in Miami this weekend. That's right. right. Wow, that's and, awesome. uh, and, uh, you know, just the camaraderie that we have and the pride that we have, um, you know, of going to Hampton and the kinship that we 
um, have as a result of that is just, you know, really something special, you know. And, uh, and uh, you know, we really take a lot of pride as being Hamptonians and doing things together and sharing information and watching each other grow and progress. And, you know, now most of us have kids and families and so forth. So it's just beautiful to watch that progression and to have that really a lifetime bond with people over uh, over a university that's really special. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so how did that transition from there into the, the music business? How did you get in? Um, well, you know, when I got out of school, my sister was a big influence. My sister's three years older than me. So mm-hmm. she was already rocking and rolling when I got out of college, you know, mm-hmm. right. she, she worked in the music business. My first job out of, out of college was working for the United way of New York city as a fundraiser, Okay, you know? Um, so, uh, you know, I had a nice, um, you know, entry level position as a fundraiser at the United Way of New York City on uh, Park Avenue and and uh, Park Avenue and 39th Street. And uh, and my sister was working at Jive Records, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, I enjoyed what I did and had some great um, exposure and experience to the business world. And then I'd go, you know, to my sister's job and I said, Wow. I didn't even know people. I didn't even know people got paid to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> What's you know, wrong with this picture? You know, yeah, here she is. You know, she's you know having you know having fun and you know working with all these young executives and and uh, you know and at that time, um, at that time, just kind of coincidentally, uh, one of my Puffy was my roommate. We we kind of shared an apartment. Uh, after, after you know years after co- after college, and uh, you know of course Puffy worked in the music business as well. Mm-hmm. So so uh, you know my exposure to the music business was really through all of the experiences that my sister would invite me to and go into her job. And you know she was working with you know um, you know groups now who are household names. You know at that time you know they were trying to break acts and hip hop was just you know in its infancy kind of, you know what I mean? And you had all these young black executives and she was working with, you know, um, her artists were, my sister was in the marketing department. So she was working with Boogie Down Productions and wow. KRS-One mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and uh, A Tribe Called Quest and wow. uh, Jazzy Jeff Jazzy and Jeff the Fresh Prince. Prince right? uh-huh. Hip hop <laughs> history. So, mm-hmm. Right, right. So, you know, Jonathan Butler and you know, all these different folks. And I'm, you know, I'm going to the, you know, record company and she's giving me CDs and we're getting all of this new music. And, you know, it was, it was a super, you know, you know, Joel, it was a super exciting time. Right. You know? Absolutely. Um, you know, to see all of these young, um, particularly young, you know, really young folks with these great jobs that were, you know, creative and they were making a bunch of money and they, you know, they're going to LA and going to Miami to do videos. And I said, man, this is, this, this, this is, is the life. <laughs> I'm well, like, hold, this is fun, man. You so, know, this is fun, you know? So hold on one second. So, we, uh, we, we getting ready to go on break. My man Esteban got the, got the one, the control panel here. He's learning the ropes. So we getting ready to go on break. We we gonna put you on hold, and then we gonna when we come back on from the break, we are gonna you know talk about your next transition. Yep. Once again, this is Power Moves. Power Moves. Where celebrities, celebrities, athletes, athletes, key influential executives share how they make money, money, how they attract power, power and how and they earn, earn respect. respect. See you after the break. Absolutely. Reality right Radio, back. In Touch Radio, where everyone is a star. All right, hold on. We'll be right back. with Taya Temple United Methodist Church. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month at the Village Market East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Free parking, free admission, fresh produce, live entertainment, vendor shopping, and delicious cooked food. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month beginning June 22nd. For vendor information, call me 1-888-991-2502. See our ad in In Touch News or Florida Sentinel. Please call me at 1-888-991-2502. The Village Market at East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Hi, 
This is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of school at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded? Then maybe you need to check The Way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based, project-based, and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your students a more excellent way at The Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, All right. right. Back. power moves. That's power right. We moves, back. Baby. We're here. Wendell, are you with us, brother? I'm here. All, All right. right. All right. right. You know, before we get started, man, I just want to give a quick memorial shout out to, to Ed Woods and his son, Che Woods, just graduated from middle school. Um, so, you know, a Hamptonian as well. And <laughs> a quick shout out to Angelique Miles, okay. who Angelique. founded shout Missy out. and Timbaland. Okay. That was at the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and you so them? you wow. know we got you know we okay. you know I, I got to look out for my Hamptonians, okay. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, shout out to my alumni, shout out to my alumni. That's I know right. Both of those people very well. God bless uh, you know Edwards who passed. No doubt, no doubt. So so no Kevin, man, what you what you got for? Yeah, so Wendell, man, you, I mean you got to speed us up because we got to get all this in here. So. You, how did you uh so what did you decide to land where did you decide to land in the music industry and then you know talk to us about how you move into the consultant role because when i saw you at the nba i think you were doing your own thing so help us mm-hmm. get there and kind of talk about leaving business and becoming more entrepreneurial so let us know what you did in music and then when you decide to make that leap sure man well As I told you, you know, my sister had exposed me to the business. I was working at United Way, and I was trying to figure out how to get my piece of the pie. You know what I mean? (laughs) How was I going to break into this, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, um, I'd established some pretty good relationships with folks. Um, You know, as I said, Puppy was my roommate, so I knew, you know, Andre Harrell, and I knew Russell and all of those guys that were, you know, at the top of the game just you know, by being able to kind of be in the in the social mix of everything. And um, and working at the United Way, I was kind of like, how do I make this transition? How can I figure out how to get in the music business? And I and along the way, I'd met so many people. You know, networking was, was one of the key things that really allowed me to do, uh, you know, to make that transition from networking and then having an entrepreneurial spirit, right? Mm-hmm. So... Uh, at that time, and Joel may remember this, he may not, you know, I said, wow, you know, let's, let me try to create something, um, that would, uh, help me to better establish myself in the business and something that is kind of really needed. So I, um, approached a couple of guys. One of them was, uh, Dwayne Taylor, right. Who was a publicist. He was, he was, he actually worked with my sister at, at one time. Um, he was a publicist at Jive Records, so I would, you know, when I would go visit my sister, I'd always see Dwayne. He was a publicity person, very, you know, um, engaging and conversational and, you know, full of energy and had all of these relationships as a publicist in the music business. Another person uh, that I met along the way was a guy named Kirk Burroughs, right? Kirk Burroughs worked in the music business at the time. Um, just as a sidebar, he later on, as a result of everything I'm about to tell you, went on to become the first general manager of Bad Boy. Mm. Uh, and then the other person was uh, Renee McLean, and Renee worked in promotions, right? So he worked at Virgin and a couple of labels. So we kind of got together, and I said, let's create, let's let's start a music industry showcase of our own, where we can showcase all of the different talent that's at the labels, right? So so we got together and we started this music industry showcase called New York Live. I don't know. Do you remember that, Joel? Yes, I do. Yes, yeah, I do. I went to <laughs> it New was York hot. Live, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was tough. So, it was tough. so we, you know, we, start, we started this music industry showcase called New York Live, 
And what that did was it uh, allowed all of the different um, uh, record companies and music labels to showcase all of their new acts right. in front of a live audience right. and in right. front of their right. peer executives, yeah. right? So yeah. we went and uh, struck a little deal with this place on 21st Street at the time called Tramps, which was a which was a live um, a, which was a live entertainment uh, live entertainment venue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was a live entertainment venue, and um, and <laughs> you know, kind of coincidentally, we would you know talk to our different peers and friends in the music industry and tell them, you know, to bring their acts through to come and showcase their new talent. Um, and quite, and uh, just kind of a little piece of history, you know. I said, you know, Puffy and I were good friends at that time. It was really one of the first places that Mary J. Blige had ever performed in front of a, a live audience. Mm-hmm. Oh. Right. So, uh, you know, and that really enabled all of us to have all of these different relationships with uh, with different labels. Right. Because everybody wanted to showcase their new act. So we had, you know, Jane Jermaine Dupree brought Chris Cross through, um, you know, Chris Cross, C.C. Peniston, uh, Das Effects. Uh, I mean, um, Bill, Bill Bellamy was, um, was the host at one point because Bill Bellamy was a popular comedian kind of on the rise. Bob Sumner was a good friend of mine and he said, man, I want to, you know, to get Bill Bellamy, you know, in front of this New York crowd. So Bill hosted New York live for a while. He was actually discovered by MTV at New York live. If you hear Bill, Bob Sumner tell the story, you might see. You might see Bill Bellamy's story told in a different way, but the insiders know <laughs> where Bill Bellamy got his, and, and Bob Sumner and Bill Bellamy himself will tell you. But, um, you know, uh, New York Live really gave gave me the, you know, the platform to meet people from all of these different labels, and then, you know, people were coming to us, you know, to showcase their acts. Mm-hmm. So, so that was really how I was able to um, foray into the music business kind of independently and entrepreneurially. And as a result of that, uh, I met a gentleman by the name of Hiram Hicks along that way who eventually um, offered me a position to come and work for him as an A&R and artist development person, right? So, um, you know, that was pretty that was pretty cool. And then, yeah, I left the United Way and um, kind of started doing freelance work for MTV and working in production and just trying to learn everything that I could about the business and and um, get opportunities to freelance, right? So I was kind of a freelance and a hired gun. And uh, I was kind of always known for my, kind of my, my my style, right? Like having this cool style and my friends, you know, who are PR people and so forth, you know, like the way that I kind of presented myself and always put little combinations together. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know anything about styling, you know, at that point until I really, you know, saw all of these different things in the music business. I was like, man, I could dress you know, I could dress that artist. I could dress LL, or I could, right. you know, I'd be like, I, could, I mean, man, I said, man, you know, that's, I, you know, I could do that. So, you know, some of my friends who worked at Def Jam and my sister was one of the people who gave me a, a kind of an opportunity. They said, well, put a portfolio together or something. Hey, I didn't even have a portfolio. How are you gonna put a portfolio <laughs> together? What's a you portfolio? Never you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, so a portfolio, you know, is, you know, pictures of your body of work and oh, so forth. And, mm-hmm. and and what I, you know, um, and what I did, so so just, Kevin, just in case you don't know, when, when, when you're, when you want these different jobs in the music business as a stylist, they call in all of these different books of different stylists. Mm-hmm. So they look through your book and they see all of your work and they say, oh yeah, we want to use this person because right. he looks like he would be a good person right. to work with right. that artist. So, you no, know, it's yeah. very, it's very competitive and you have to have, a portfolio of all of your images that's that you've awesome. done. So yeah, that's, that's you know our that might get, get that power move going. So good, good, the, good. The, the, it's, it's, it's yeah. So you know, not so. So I didn't even have a. Um, and I'm gonna tell you what I did. I didn't have a portfolio. So what I did, I went to my barber, who was a good friend of mine, um, and uh, Danny Mo. And you guys might know that we heard his name before, right? Because mm-hmm. we ended up doing a lot of work together after this. And uh, I got one of my friends. And uh, we put a b- bunch of clothes on, uh, on, on, you know, bought a bunch of clothes uh, on credit cards, right? And did mm-hmm. a photo shoot, and we were, the, and we were the models. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, <laughs> right, mm-hmm. right. So, and then you know, after that, I took all of the clothes back. You know what I mean? <laughs> after, we, after we, after we did a photo shoot with all of these clothes, and you know, 
And Joel, you can attest to this. So at that time, it was like we went out and bought all this Helly Hansen stuff and all mm-hmm. of this North Face, and we bought Timberlands and we Nike. I mean, all of the cool fly stuff that everybody was wearing. And uh, so we, you know, went to Central Park and did this. You know, my my barber came. He gave us the fresh haircuts, and here we, you know, we're looking like you know models and young rap stars. So I did a portfolio. I probably had about you know twelve. 16 photos in a portfolio, put it together, and then I went into Def Jam and said, look, this is what I would make, you know, this is what I would do for LL, this is what I would do for y'all, they would look like this, to be wearing clothes like this, and then I said, okay, okay, well, we'll give you a shot. Oh, nice. And uh, so uh, Def Jam, I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, Jive Records gave me one of the, uh, um, one of my opportunities to do my first photo shoot with this young artist named Ahmad. He had a a song called Back in the Day. Back in the day, I'm not a kid anymore. Mm-hmm. Is it right? Oh, yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, so you know, I remember way back when. So that went well. You know, the photo shoot went well. And now what do I have after that photo shoot, Kevin? Who is that? I got an artist in my portfolio. <laughs> 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 so I, you know, go. now, I got a, go. now I got a real artist in my portfolio. No you doubt. know what I mean? No doubt. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, awesome. and, and, right? and that right? goes that goes to speaking to you know Kevin Carr's medallions of the ingenuity. Yeah, you and the opportunism. Ingenuity and the to opportunism. Put it I mean, it's you know back in the, back in those days, hip hop was 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 hungry. And it was in its early stages. And the only way you got in is by creative. being creative and just, even if you had nothing, you just made it happen. That and, was and the spirit. Yeah, you know, and one, thing I, and one thing, and, and kind of one thing I can attest to from, you know, being Puffy's roommate and seeing how his hustle, like, you know, um, you know, very early on, it was, you know, you don't realize it at the time, but it was very inspiring. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I would go to Jody D's photo shoots and Heavy D's videos and, you know, my sister would be doing videos with, uh, you know, Salt and Pepper and all these other people. So I was going to experience a lot of those things and being on set and seeing what happened behind the scenes because I'd never been exposed to anything like that before in my entire life. I didn't, right. you know, I didn't know you could, get, I didn't know you could get, you know, people got paid for putting, you know, for dressing the artist and putting right. them in clothes. You know, you know, I didn't know, you know, I never really thought about who the video directors were and who was doing the videos and Ralph McDaniel's and you know, Hype Williams and all those kind of people, you know, were emerging and having these careers that traditionally, you know, black young black people had never had those jobs, you know? Right, right. Um, That's awesome. Right, you know, so, so we, 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 you know, we became kind of a, uh, a, a family of um, creative people all of our own, and I started doing a lot of videos with Hype Williams, and Hype would hire me to, you know, style different videos, and I, you know, I ended up having a great relationship with Def Jam, and then, you know, Def Jam would hire me to come and, you know, you know, work with LL Cool J or Montel Williams or Method Man or whoever, yeah. you know, and uh, and then, uh, you know, once you get in house and start working with all of these great labels, I that's, you know, Kevin to your your, your testament to your um, uh, acknowledgement, I became a hired gun. I became like an independent person that worked uh, for all of these different labels, and I was started styling all of these different artists on on different um, on uh, on different labels, right? So I was doing New York Live, and I was styling. So I had really kind of started to build a reputation as being a person who, you know, could identify musical talent and who could also style artists, right? Mm-hmm, so. Right. Um, so we so, and, uh, so hold and on one I, second. A, well, sure. we get we getting ready to go on break one more time. We're gonna we're gonna place you on hold, and then we're gonna start transitioning from from there to how you started original golf e classic. Mm-hmm. And original that comes okay. to, all right. Classic. OTC, so baby. So once again, this is Power, Power Moves, Moves, and this is In Touch Radio, Reality Radio, where everyone is a star. We'll you can call right in eight one three four 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 nine five eight eight. Esther Bond, take it away, take baby. It on the one and two, we'll be right back.
Hey, this is Agent Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecues? Come see them two brothers in the grill. Located at 423 Virginia Street, Charleston, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, <laughs> collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some and get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowers Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. One darn second. America, since 2017, is suffering from a serious hiccup. 9-11 is seriously overused in a distasteful manner. Every day the cops are calling on an innocent, innocent person of color. It amazes me that America has come down to this. A person of color becomes a person of interest. Waffle House, the dorm, Starbucks is a few. This is not the lunch counters, sit-ins of the 1960s. 2019, harassed simply for being black and proud. Hold on one darn second. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. Pre-order my new book, Motivational Moments, at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. Where celebrities, athletes, key influential executives share how they make money, money. how they attract power, how they oh, earn respect. respect. So, you know, t- Wendell's going to share with us how he's he's already showed us how he's uh, made money through his entrepreneurship hustle. He sh- he's sharing with us how he's built the relationship capital by attracting powerful, influential people. And, uh, and, and now, you know, Kevin, you're going to share, you know, how you – want to ask some questions about how he's earned respect in the different the NBA transitioning to OG, o, OTC. TG, OTGC and, and what he's mm. working on now. So, so Wendell, you know, there's, there's so much I want to ask you, Mendel. Um, you, you've done a whole, your body of work speaks for itself, but, you know, take us to, you know, where did you come up with OTC, man? Because, that, that's one of the best events I've I've ever been to in terms of empowering, seeing people of color do something that we aren't normally known to do, and we enjoy it immensely. You mm-hmm. hear me? And mm-hmm. people get so inspired when they leave that event, and it was so um, telling over the years to hear you talk about. I want to diversify golf uh, beyond the classic, and you actually went to the. PGA of America and worked and we want to hear like what what went into getting OTC on and popping in the way it is now and then what went into you going to the PGA of America and and take us you know further like what are the bigger things too that you see through golf that you're going to be doing a lot there man go at it yeah we, and, yeah, and, we, and, we yeah. and we only got 12 minutes to do it bro yeah you only got okay, a few okay. minutes brother bring okay, us out okay let me okay y'all be quiet then y'all be quiet okay then listen up pay attention pay attention i gotta i gotta i gotta i gotta put a 20 years into these next 10 minutes okay so, <laughs> so look man you know, uh, as, a, as a result of me doing all of the work that I've done in sports and entertainment, right, uh, I went on to do a lot of work with the NBA, Kevin, as you know, because some of the artists that I was working with regularly ended up having to do appearances with the NBA, oh, right? Okay. So I found myself on occasion, you know, going on the set of NBA shoots with the artists that I worked with, and uh, and, and that's when I kind of met Danny Marzella. Oh, right? yeah, and that's Danny right. Was a young executive at that time. So, you know, and Danny, you know, in, 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 in essence of saving time on those productions, you, some of the people at the NBA didn't, didn't know who these new um, talents were. Right, right? So right. remember at one time, remember at one time, and one incident stands out in particular where it was a young, um, uh, you know, young white uh, executive at the NBA who was dealing with the talent and she had to put them in NBA clothes, right? So she was, uh, she was saying, uh, you know, they were like, put, this is, you need to get, put this on Dr. Dre, right? So <laughs> mind you, 
mind you, they meant Dr. Dre from Ed Lover and Dr. Dre, not oh. Dr. Dre from, right? <laughs> you know, so 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 she so she began to you know embark on a whole another mission that was with the wrong person, and I wow. said, oh no 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 no, I said no, Big Dre, but it's Dr. Dre, so. You know, I kind of stepped in and helped facilitate right. that. And then Danny was like, Danny, Danny eventually was like, well, I just need to hire you then. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're doing stuff like this. Right. I just need to hire you. Right, and I right, said, right. yo, man, I, you know, I said, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to work with you guys. Anytime you have a shoot or a production that involves this kind of talent, give me a call. And I can, make, I, I, you know, I have relationships with most of them. And, you know, I can make this a lot e a easier experience for you because, you know, I know what I'm doing. I know what they like, and I can very easily say, "Yo, you know, LL, throw this jersey on, man. Come on, get to the set." You know right, what I mean? Right. It's that kind of that easy for me. You know right, what I mean? Right. So, so that that's kind of what um, what um, initiated my relationship with the NBA that evolved into much bigger things, as right. you know, Kevin. Mm -hmm. You know, which oh, involved huge. you know evolved into NBA All Star, doing commercials with the NBA, Absolutely. and really being a, a consultant to the NBA on the on the fashion tip and really, you know, a lot of people don't realize, Kev, you probably know this, but remember the NBA had a really big, uh, a really big, um, dress code issue at one time. Yeah, right? Absolutely. And, 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 you know, the players weren't, were coming way out of dress code and, yep. when, you know, the era when everything baggy was, so I, you know, I consulted them during that period of time yeah, and helped did. them transition, help them transition people into coming to the event more um you know more buttoned up so to speak right, you know what i mean not casual and now kev it bug, bugs me out because you see what it has evolved to right now yeah. all of the players are like fashion statements no right doubt. You know, they want to no they want to come to the game like they're walking the runway now you know <laughs> so you know, I, i'd like to think that i had a hand in that you know in making that transition no doubt um, no doubt but, man uh, your dress code uh skills allowed the nba to open up this mind in terms of what dress and style actually could look like and helping us move out of the, you know, the Tims and the sagging and the, and the throwbacks yeah, and, the, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the hats and the chains. But you also help them understand that's still part of the culture, but we can do it in a stylistic way. So your, your style, you know, it was, uh, you know, huge, um, huge uh, forefront, forefront thinking with Danny and you guys collaborating. And that's where I actually heard of you too through Danny and your OTC, man. So that, that, that's a, so yeah. I'm interested in that too. So you, you were huge uh, in those spaces. Okay. Well, let me tell you, man, it was almost as a result of working with the NBA. I, I got exposed to golf, you know, in late nineties, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, a mentor of mine and introduced me to the game and I, you know, I kind of fell in love with it. I started going to Chelsea Piers and learning the game a little bit and really, right. you know, fell in love with it. Cause you know, it, when I went out to the golf course for the first time, it was really, you know, kind of it embodied everything that I enjoyed. You know, mm -hmm. I love sports. I love the camaraderie with my friends. You know, I love, you know, a great experience with being around friends and having a little competitive nature, talking a little trash, you know, mm -hmm. and then, obviously also um you know obviously pushing yourself to be better you know and mm -hmm. golf really and and the fashion part of golf you know right, like right. you know i like you know cleaning myself up looking good going oh, out there feeling good and playing well you know yeah. mm -hmm. so uh um when i got introduced to golf um i started reading everything that i could about the sport on how to play and then some of the history of the game and one of the books that i picked up uh, ended up changing my life. I, I picked up a book called uh, Forbidden Fairways okay. that was all about the history of African Americans in golf, a book written by Dr. Calvin Sinet. If you don't have it, go out and get it. Say That's that right. one more time. Um, um, say it one more time. Uh, Wendell, it's what's called, forbi it's forbidden. called Forbidden, Fair forbidden Fairways. Okay. Forbidden right? Fairways. By Dr. Calvin Sinet. And then there's another book that I read, consumed from cover to cover, called Uneven Lies by Pete McDaniel. Okay. And Pete McDaniel was actually the writer for Golf Digest for Tiger Woods. And oh, so wow. both of these gentlemen, both of these gentlemen wrote books about the history of African Americans and golf, right? Because mm -hmm. when you read, you, you know, when you read most um, books about golf, it doesn't say anything about people of color being involved in the game, right? Right. So when you read, you know, the books about, you know, Bobby Jones and, you know, Sam Snead and Palmer and Nicholas and so forth, like, you know, there weren't any black people participating in this, 
you know. So mm-hmm. when I read these other two books, it was it was quote unquote it was our story, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. I, that's when I learned about Charlie Sifford and Lee Elder and Renee right. Powell and and Joseph Bartholomew, who went and, you know, a black man in Louisiana who built his own golf course. And the Powell family, they went and built their own golf course when they couldn't, when they couldn't, um, weren't allowed to play on public courses. Wow. You know, and all of these great things that people of color had done for the game and then the barriers that they broke and found out, you know, Joe Lewis, the world heavyweight boxing champion, was a super avid golfer and played. And he, you know, he financed and bankrolled a lot of, um, uh, amateur black tournaments back during his era because he loved to play so much. So I said, wow, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. All of this history, all of this history that probably no, nobody, nobody knows really knows. About. Nobody right. knows, you know? And one of the things that really struck with me, because I was reading this book and it was like, it was 1998 or 1999, kept you guys. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I read was that a black man had invented the golf tee. Okay. Right. Wow, you're like what? Hold up, the golf tee. Hmm? No, you're like what? Hold up, what did you say? Right. So, so, so here it is, a hundred years going on, a hundred years ago. So it's the, like the anniversary of the invention of the golf tee by a black man. I'm like, I'm like, I know a, a man named George F. Grant who was a Harvard Dental School graduate patented the first golf tee. So what happened was a few several years later. A white inventor invented another wooden golf tee called the Ready Tee, and he was able to get people to he was able to market it sure. and get people to play with it. So people really didn't acknowledge George Grant's original invention of the golf tee, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But they really gave William Lowell the credit for the golf tee. So I would I said to myself, I said the original tee was invented in 1899 by a black man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I said, you know what? And it's a shame that he's not getting credit. And here I know all of these people of color that are playing golf. I'm starting to get into the game. And when I go to do things with the NBA, all of the players, George Gervin and Dr. J and all of the coaches, they're all on the court talking about golf because they get together and they play golf with one another. So that also had an a influence on me to say, wow, all of these people really love this game of golf and they're playing golf and I'm starting to get into it. And I said, wow, I want to make sure that all of these people know about the history of people of color in the game. You know, I said, and uh, Joel knows, you know, I started New York Live. I've done Bone and Win Entertainment. We've done Bone and Win big parties and things all throughout New York City over the years. And I said, you know what, if I can do these kinds of events that I've done over my lifetime and get all of these people to come, I said, wow, I want to do something in golf that's gonna that can go on that can stand the test of time and go on forever. And if I can do a party and I can do the, if I can do an event at Tavern on the Green and Tramps and get all those people to come, I'm going to start a golf tournament and get all the people that I know to come and support a golf event. And you know what I want to call it? I'm going to start it. I'm going to start something and I'm going to start a little, a boutique brand and start my own little apparel label. And it's going to be called original T because Mm. I want it. I want people to be aware of the history of of African Americans and golf and know that our history started way before Tiger Woods, and then you can date it back to the early 1800s when a black man patented, invented, patented, and invented the original T. See, that's a that's an ingenuity that we're talking about. That people, when they need to make a power move in their career or something that will have impact on society, you have to have ingenuity and to figure it out by doing your research and doing your development and to put in the time to also invest in yourself and your idea man i can tell you i went to your uh one and i think 89 it was it was fantastic no not 89 but um excuse me and i think it was around 2000 and so me and rory sparrow Uh and i knew this was going to be a fantastic event because when i went into uh, the event, and I wiped my feet, and I went down and looked at it. It was original T Classic carpet. <laughs> I could not believe my man had right. monogrammed right. the carpet. Yes, sir. I was like, this is going to be a great event because mm-hmm. the carpet has got its brand on it. Like, we literally are walking on top of something that I knew he took time to design. So, man, fantastic. Wendell, we got too much 
to still cover, man. This this so, is yeah. this, what 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 what, can, what are we gonna do about this? We we're gonna have to have a part two because we, and we got to. and this we is got and to. this is in helping to promote the original T Golf Classic happening in Crystal. Was it Crystal River? Crystal Springs, man, New Jersey, July 21st. You can go to OriginalT.com. Anybody that's interested in it, all welcome. And, uh, yeah, man, this is uh, – we we getting cut short, man, because I got to go into all of the Original T stuff now. Man. Yeah, that's yeah. The and so, so, so that's the that's what we're saying. Stuff. We're going to have to do this part two next week, if that's next all right week. with you. or, or and, uh, and, Kevin, and, and, Kevin, to the NBA's credit, man, and all of those relationships that, I, that you've heard me talk about throughout this interview, those were the people who were some of my original sponsors, including mm. Danny Mizellas and Adam Silver, who who um, were the first sponsors of the original T Golf Classic. And they've been, I can tell you this, they've been a sponsor of the NBA has been a sponsor of the original T Golf Classic for 20 years now. This wow. year, mm. for, wow. the, for the life for the life of his tournament. Wow. And you know, um, you know, cool. Rory Sparrow and all those guys in the NBA always comes and supports the tournament. And I've mm. honored people like Dr. J and George Gervin and Sam Jones and all those great NBA players who love to play golf. But uh, I would love to talk about that a lot more because now I'm starting to get some of the best black pros in the world to play in the original T for a purse. And, and, that's and, the, and, the goal, and, the, and the goal is to make it. Last year we had... You know, four play four black players, some of the best black players in the world play for twenty thousand dollar purse. And this year we're gonna be doing the same thing with four black women, black oh, players wow. in it. Wow. Sabina Park, Ginger Howard, Shasta Avery Hart, world class caliber players who are trying to make it to the L P G A tour. So the goal and I you know, I know we're we're kind of out of time, but just to give you a, a quick um, you know, uh, uh, update of where original T is, it's you know, now the goal is to make it the best in class tournament for you know the, the BET of of golf tournaments, so to speak, you know what I mean. That's, that's right. The best black players, the best black players in the world, compete for a purse in front of an audience of uh, a diverse audience of people of color, witnessing them and watching them play at a very very high level. So see, see, um, see, see we got to do part two. Man. We, 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 we can't we definitely do this. Ain't part doing two. it justice. So man, you got to <laughs> come back next Saturday. We got to figure this out. <laughs> so let's let's put put it down. We got to have you, man. So tell the clear the calendar, tell the wife, tell the kids for just one hour, one more time, because we got to promote this classic. We got to get some more bodies there. And you are doing a great work. So. And absolutely, we going to continue this. And let me, tell you, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this, guys. I want to interject for one second. <laughs> <laughs> one quick second. Joel, because when I, come, when I come back, why don't we try to do this before the event date? Because I bring my honoree this year is Uncle Luke. Who's an avid golfer? All right, golfer, oh, right. You know, we got the breath. So why don't we? We got the breath. Why, why don't we try to do this again? And I'll try to see if I can get Luke to join us in the conversation for the interview. All right. he, he was at the he was at the very first original T Golf Classic, so he can tell you what he's seen from his point of view for twenty years. Awesome, All right, man. We'll, we we'll definitely it. do that. So we'll schedule it. I'll I'll, I'll uh, text you and then we'll go from there. Oh, yes, but once sir. again, man, this was a great Saturday, great yes, interview sir. with Wendell Haskins, Mr. Man. Wendell. Wendell breaking barriers <laughs> once again. Way to because go, Because he's the only. So proud of you, brother. He's a he's the only guest so far that we had to create a part two. <laughs> <laughs> he's made see, history. See, that's what I that's what I do, baby. I that's break barriers. I break, break barriers, barriers, baby. <laughs> Well, All well right, see man. you later, man. Well, power moves, All right, celebrities, we celebrities, athletes, 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 key influential executives, executives share how they make money, money, how they attract power, power and how they earn respect. respect baby. We're going to see Way this part go, two man. with Uncle Luke. Uncle Luke and Mr. Wendell. Peace out. <laughs>